Hey guys, I'm back with another beginner chess game analysis video. Um, this is number 22 in my series. If you would like me to analyze your game, send me a message somewhere and um, make sure that you are rated about 1750 or under on Lee Chess or maybe 1400, 1450 or under on chess.com. Um, and yeah, as a disclaimer, I'm not a titled player. My current rating uh, peak on Lee Chess Rapid is 2154. That should give you an idea of my skill level. So I'm not, I'm not a titled player. So consider that when listening to my advice. So let's get started here. Um, this is my first time looking at the game. This is uh, David as black here. And um, I actually gave David a, a chess lesson. I do offer some private chess lessons if anyone's interested. I, I don't think I've ever mentioned that before. Um, maybe I did one time. Anyways, yeah, I, I, I gave David a lesson, um, but he, he still requested me to do one of his videos um, in these series. And yeah, so I imported this from chess.com and David at this time of this game was rated just under 1200. So let's take a look here. I'm hoping to find a lot of mistakes because uh, I just finished in my previous beginner chess game analysis video, I did a video where both sides played a pretty much perfect game, like 10 cent, average 10 cent upon loss. Um, so <laughs> I'm hoping that this will be a lot easier to analyze. So we have a French Sicilian, I remember now that this is what David likes to play, kind of like a can structure. Um, I don't play the can, so I won't be able to comment on this too much, but I do play against it as white. Um, yeah, so this bishop, bishop b5 is not as popular as just d4 here. And so I think I, I spoke to David about this before. Um, in fact, let me, well, I guess I can't pause the video, um, but I can, I can, let me switch windows here because I'm wondering if, if this is a game that I actually looked over uh, with him in, uh, in one of our lessons. I'm just going to look at my email communication with him because I'm wondering if I got the right game here. Well, since I already started, I'm not going to bother <laughs> checking. I, but I think I already looked at this game. I think I only went over this game with him when we did our lesson. Our lesson was like a few weeks ago, so I can't remember. But yeah, so basically here, uh, black left book with a six. Oh yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure I went over this game with him. But I, I guess I'll do it for you guys in the public as well. Um, I probably won't go super in depth to it just because I already did this with him. But yeah, so a6, uh, David left book here on move four. So this is something that David needs to dig into and, and research this opening a little bit more, this French variation, because bishop b5 is the second main line. So I know the beginners don't need to spend too much time on the opening, but this is only move four. And I, I do recommend that um, you know, you, if you're going to, if you're going to play these, these main line openings, you should know the, the main responses and it, it's move four. So even beginners should know a little bit past at least move four. Um, yeah, a six is, it's only been played six times before. The problem is with a six is that black is going to get an incredibly bad structure, uh, especially because the light squared bishop is just going to get buried in a body of pawns. Um, the main lines here, there's a bunch of them, but the top two are knight g e7 and knight d4. So if I show you this screen here, um, you can always check the, the, the database. Uh, make sure you have it on the master's database here, um, not the Lee Chess database. If you're using chess.com, just, yeah, it's the same idea. You want to, usually you want to choose a repertoire line that's one of the 
the most common lines. I'm, I'm not going to get into too much depth about that right now, but my point is a six basically never been played before and black never won. It's been black lost every game of those six games. Um, so let me get back to my other screen. So as I was saying, a six, the problem with a six is that uh, black simply the, um, kills his light squared bishop. It's going to take 10 years for this light squared bishop to see the light of day. No, pun intended, actually. <laughs> um, so in addition to that, uh, black also gets double pawns and, and a isolani on the A file. So, and that's, that's, that's very easily seen when you play a six, because a six, what might my opponent do? Well, my opponent, what if he takes my knight? Well, yeah, our bishop sucks and our pawn structure sucks. And even if we took with the D pawn, the light squared bishop is still buried in a body of pawns. And even, and we don't want to play E5 later because that's going to weaken um, some, some light squares on on our king side okay so let's 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 continue here this is this is what happened in the game h6 was very very timid very slow move um black needs to develop right opening principle here just develop your pieces black needs to develop and castle um, the last thing black needs to do is make another pawn whoops make him another pawn move which is what happened here um <laughs> you know, there's just pawns everywhere and black makes, makes yet another pawn move. So black was probably scared of something like bishop g5, knight g5. Um, but that's not a, that's not a concern, right? Like, like if let's say, let's say we, so he was, okay. I remember now talking with David. So he was concerned about, he was concerned about knight f6, bishop g5. And then he was concerned about e5 hitting that. Um, first, so the thing is, we don't have to play knight f6. We can develop by going to e7 first, and then to to g6. That's one way of doing this. Um, potentially, we could consider a fianchetto, um, developing that way. I don't really like that though as much. I I personally like knight g7 to knight e7 to g6 maneuver. Even though we want to develop our minor pieces, d5 may be a move here, trying to control the center a little bit and maybe improve our doubled pawns. It also starts to clear the way for our light squared bishop. Um, but h6 is just too slow of a move. We're not controlling the center. We're not leading the way to developing our pieces. Um, so yeah. So he plays this now. This is all, all okay, I think. Yeah, so, ew, yeah, um, boy, just look at the difference in the position, but white is, has two pieces developed, it's his move again, he's, he's castled, and, um, he has no double pawns, no isolanis, so, and, and black, uh, meanwhile, black has an isolani on the A file, double files on the C file, a buried, actually, well, two buried bishops, both bishops are completely dead. And um, a knight that has moved twice, actually uh, three times. <laughs> boom, 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 because he got kicked out there. Um, and black didn't even make that many mistakes. It was largely because of that opening error of a6. And you can just see how one seemingly small mistake can just cause issues down the road. Okay, castles. Oh, uh, yeah, so we, Oh yeah, I guess he he just drops a pawn there after castles here. Um, yeah, I don't even know if he has. He doesn't really have an option there though. But I don't think he has any option here. He's just he's just losing there. Um, yeah, I, I remember looking at this game with him. The, honestly, this game really stemmed from this opening mistake of a six. This is actually a very illustrative game of just how much pawn structure and opening mistakes, just one simple, again, seemingly innocuous mi mistake can just kill you here. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, Black drops another pawn. There was nothing he could do about that. Um, okay. Oh yeah, so this was another thing. Um, it's not a huge deal, but I think Black Black shouldn't be trying to create counterplay and conflict with his queen. Um, I know he's attacked right now, but I think Black has other priorities priorities here. Um, one of which is to develop, like improve his, he still hasn't developed or improved his dark, his light squared bishop here. Um, that would be something that I would really be con working on. I know his queen is attacked, but when we play a move like queen before, we're probably just going to get attacked again. Um, with a, a move like queen c2, a3, eventually we're going to have to move out yet again. So it it might not be the loss of a tempo immediately, but eventually it will be. So unless Black has an immediate an immediate plan with Queen B four, um, I I wouldn't play such a move. Um, in fact, it's kind of a hope chess move in a way because are we are we thinking that White won't see that we're attacking his pawn? No, White's going to see that, and White will just again just play a move like like queen c2 and then a3 and this queen has to move again and we're losing a tempo. So it, I, I like counterplay, but this is this is not, um, there's no plan behind it. It's kind of a hoping move, uh, a hopeful move. So I, I think I might just play something like queen e7 here or queen c7. Um, White doesn't, I don't think white responded the best way, um, but I like, oh, yeah, then this, oh, yeah, so you can see, um, black's queen is already starting to get trapped here. Um, okay. Oh, this was a strange move. Knight, oh, sorry, knight e7. I remember this, I remember this game now. I remember seeing, like, going over this with David, and he had a reason behind knight e7. I can't remember what it was, though, but he did have a reason. It might, oh, I think he, did he want, oh, what, uh, okay, that's what it was, yeah. He wanted to challenge this knight on d6, which is a good idea, but he's going to spend two moves to do that. Um, and the thing is, he, this is the funny thing. It's a good plan because this is, of course, a, a very annoying knight. So it's a good plan. The problem is white doesn't have to take our knight. White could just move back. And then the funny thing is black actually spent two moves to get there. White only had to spend one move to go back. Um, and then if black wants to go back to the center, he's going to have to spend, he's going to have to move again, It'll take a million moves. Um, so unfortunately, this knight has to stay there for the time being. We can't really do anything about it. One way might be to start undermining the pawns behind it, the pawns that are defending it. So one way is we could play a5 and um, start to chip away at some of the de defenses behind the knight. But yeah, the funny thing about this is that White can just move the, the knight back. So this is, this is what happened in the game. And yeah, and he did just move the knight back. So it's it's funny because now all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, now what? Now our knight is, is on c8 and we just spent a few moves to do that. Um, I, I'm kind of speeding along here because um, I just, well, partly because I'm, I'm really hungry. That's actually the, the truth. Oh, f5 is a, is a huge error. Um, John Bartholomew calls the f pawn the forget about it pawn. Usually, and you know, and of course, um, Ben Feingold always, he, he, like the, you know, f6, never play f6. Um, f5, you want to be very careful when playing such moves. It's a very weakening structural move. Uh, it creates weaknesses behind it. We now have a very weak, so after, sorry, after f5, we have a very weak, E pawn, it's a backwards pawn. And we have, basically we create two very weak squares on E5 and E6. And yes, we're kicking out this knight, but 
um, white can just simply retreat and these structural changes cannot be fixed. My dog's breaking in here. He wants me to feed him dinner, so I better hurry up. <laughs> there for He's hungry. Um, yeah, I gotta feed him dinner, so let me hurry up here. Um, so 97. I'm gonna kind of speed along here. Oh yeah, this this was just he simply loses a knight. His whole yeah, I talked to him about this. Um, he wanted to break open his his light squared bishop at any cost, and he was he he was prepared to sacrifice his knight for it. So this is how the game went, and it's nice. It's a nice idea. He does have a nice bishop now, but it's not worth it's not worth giving up a minor piece for that. Um, it's just not worth it. He's it's it makes so much more sense to just play this slowly, you know. Um, knight e7 maybe then he brings out the bishop this way it's going to take a million moves but you got to be patient it's not worth just giving up a knight okay you get a pawn for the knight but it's not worth it um it's that's not <laughs> a sound sacrifice um maybe if you had like attacking chances and so forth or you got two pawns for it but a pawn for the for the knight it's not it's not enough you just got to be patient here 97, maybe snake this bishop around. Um, you got to be patient here. And yeah, you just can't give up that knight like that. Um, I'm, I'm really speeding along here. But yeah, these... Uh, and you don't want to be trading pieces as well. But this is, you know, this is really a lost game at this point. But when you're down material and black is down a knight, you want to avoid trading pieces, but again, there's not really anything that black can do at this point. I will, yeah, and then here he resigned. So a quick recap of that game. This was 90%, this game was 90% about this a6 move. Um, Cause you can see that after a6 and after after bishop takes c6 and, and b takes c6, the structure is so bad for black. And I think if it put on the engine, like it gets like at this point here it's already plus two it's over plus two for white in the eval which is insane um and it just goes to show you how important openings can be even at a lower level um so just the fact that we kill the light squared bishop um not even factoring in the double pawns and the and the isolani that we create makes a6 just uh, a really really poor move so um, other than a6 um, I didn't like h6 way too slow the last thing we want is more pawn moves we want to develop so knight ge7 or anything to develop d5 anything um, but this is too slow um, same thing I still don't like knight f6 because our knight is gonna have to move a billion times around and we're just wasting time here um, we lose another pawn. This was all a function of the bad structure from the opening of a6. And um, queen g4 or queen b4 I didn't like because we're, again, we're kind of wasting time and we're just going to, we're just going to get kicked out or trapped with, with such a move. If we don't have a clear plan of why we were playing queen b4 in the first place, then we shouldn't play it. And, and then lastly, there was this thing, it's not a huge de de deal though, but um, it's, it was a good idea, but the fact is white doesn't have to take, white can just move back and black spent a million moves moving backwards. And then last but not least, this, oh, well, there, actually there was two more things. F5 is too weak, uh, it's a structural uh, disaster for black. Keep those pawns back in front of the king. Um, don't push them unless you have a really good rationale behind it. And last but not least, yeah, it's it's a frustrating position for black, but the last thing you want to do here is just donate material for free. So uh, you just gotta you just gotta be patient here, and um, um, yeah. It, well, in fact, you should have moved back to begin with, but because uh, like even here, even just like ninety seven here, and this is still much better for white because of black's terrible light squared bishop. But you just got to take your time, maybe plant this knight here, maybe double up on the on the d file, snake this bishop maybe eventually, 
maybe under or you could undermine the the b pawn with a5 but yeah do not sack the knight for nothing hopefully that was helpful um, that's it for me today thanks for watching um, feel free to subscribe on youtube i would appreciate it if you haven't already um, but no pressure thanks for watching have a good night